QuickBooks Online 2023. Invoice Selling Inventory. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have the free QuickBooks Online sample company open. If you want these two things open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser and picking the incognito window, then searching in the search engine for QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're going to be using the sample company to compare and contrast the accountant view, which is the view that the Get Great Guitars file is in, and the business view, the view the sample company is in. You can change between the two views by going to the cog drop down up top and switching the view on down below. We're going to be opening a couple tabs to put our reports in as we do every time. We're going to duplicate the tab by right clicking on it and duplicate it. Right click on the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle as the tab to the right is thinking reports on the left hand side. Opening up the balance sheet report, one of the favorites. If you're in the other view, the business view, by the way, the reports are located in the business overview and then the reports and that's where they are there. Let's go to the tab to the right. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Right now, go to the reports at the bottom and open up the P to the L, the profit and the loss, otherwise known as the income statement, claim or close the hamburger and change the range from 010123 tab 123123 tab run it to refresh it nothing's in it yet but we're getting there stuff's going to happen here this time this is when this is a big moment we're going to go to the tab to the middle and then close the burger again and change the range from 010123 to 123123 run it to refresh it that's the setup process we do every time in prior presentations, we set up the new company file. We put our beginning balances in place. We set up our service items, our inventory items, our chart of accounts. And then we enter transactions common to, to starting a business, financing the business by taking out a loan and putting our personal money into the checking account to build the capital so that we can then buy stuff which means we bought, for example, the furniture and equipment that we're gonna use. That's an investment in the business to generate revenue in the future. And we put money into the inventory assets. Now, finally, we can start selling stuff. So people coming in to the shop and this is where, this is where it happens here. So now we're gonna have an invoice for the sale of inventory. So I'm gonna go back to the tab to the left. Note that everything's set up to make the inventory or, or the invoice as easy as possible or a sales receipt as easy as possible was that we went down to the, if I go into the sales item, you'll recall that we set up our products and services and we've got our items nice and set up. So now when we enter the sales transactions, you want to imagine it to be as easy as possible, for example, so that like a check register person can be at a check register and just you bring something up to them and they could just record it or even you can scan it yourself even though the transaction is actually quite complex especially if you're tracking inventory as we will see and we know that 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 tab if i was using the business view by the way if i go on over here was under the get paid and pay tab products and services there's our products and services so now we're gonna make a sale. So I'm gonna go up top and go to the new button to make the sale. We use the invoice if we're making the sale on account, that's gonna be common for businesses like the bookkeeping businesses, uh, a law firm, landscaping. We do the work and then 
uh, we're going to collect the money with the received payment in the future as opposed to a situation where you get paid at the same time at like a cash register for example that might be in a store in a restaurant in a food truck notice that that's the other way that we might uh, get money on the customer side of things the customer cycle is we might have the deposit form that we just record as the sales note that you, if that was the case, you'd be in an industry that's going to be more simplified of an industry. Typically, you get paid by like YouTube or you get paid through a gig economy. Some platform is paying you. Then you might use bank feeds, for example, and just record the deposit form and record that to income. You're going to lose a little bit of the of the richness of the reporting that way because the deposit form isn't really designed to be the sales forms as the invoices and sales receipts are they don't have the things like the service items related to them but they work quite well if you're in that kind of business where you can just record revenue as you get the deposit so it depends on the industry here we're going to go to the invoice imagining that we're going to enter uh, an invoice and we want to do the invoice related to the sale of uh, uh, an inventory item because that's going to be the more complex type of invoice so up top we've got the client or the customer i'm going to say anderson we already have anderson here so you can start typing it in then it'll populate or you can add it up top tab and everything populates so that looks good so we've got the email address which is commonly uh, necessary if we're going to be emailing which more and more is common if you're in a situation where you're sending out the invoices we've got the billing address the terms we set our standard terms to be net 30. Remember that you can change the terms for an individual customer and you could set basically your standard terms. That means that we want to be paid within 30 days of the issuance of the invoice, which I'm gonna say is on the 16th. So we issue the invoice on the 16th, we'll say, and that means the due date will be 30 days later, uh, February 15th, 2023. The invoice number populates automatically, so that's good. We've got the location uh, of the sale, which is gonna be standard and necessary because that's gonna be used to calculate the sales tax. So it's picking up our store location that we set up by default. We're not gonna be adding any tags. And then down below, we've got the products that we're going to be selling. So let's add our items. So we have them set up already. We're just gonna imagine they come up to the check register or something, or they're gonna tell us what they're gonna, gonna want. We'll, we'll populate the invoice and ELP. And so we're gonna say ELP tab, description populates. We're gonna say that there's five of the, Notice it gives us a nice little thing, uh, quantity on, on hand and uh, quantity on purchase order. So I'm gonna say that we want the five of these and then the rate is going to be 500 that's going to give us the 2500 it is taxable we set that up when we set up the item now the tax is going to be applied that tax being the sales tax the usage type tax and then an e an epr we're going to want tab and that one is going to be we'll just say one of those 550 and that one didn't populate as taxable i'm going to check I'm gonna check that it should be a taxable item. I'm gonna check my items over here. Okay, so it should be set up as a taxable item. Okay, and then the next one's gonna be an EPSH and we'll populate that one. And we're just gonna say that we want one of those. So that looks good, okay? So that looks good. So that comes out to the 3,450. Then we have the sales tax, which is populating by location. And we put our location in California in Beverly Hills for the practice problem. That's where it's calculating then uh, the sales tax. You can adjust the sales tax if you needed to for whatever reason by going in here and you can override the sales tax. So it's populating. You can see the detail in here. You can override it. You have to give it a reason. I'm going to close this out and say, uh, hold on a sec. Do you want to leave without saving? I'm going to say, no, let's close it out this way and then say, yes, I wanna leave. And then I also have included this 5% rate. Now I'm gonna use the 5% rate to have just a generic problem for the sales tax. That's the idea. You can change it here if you added that 5% rate, or you can change it here by adjusting the math if you wanna match up with our practice problem. I'm gonna right click on the tab to the, to the right just to show you the sales tax tab. 
and see where you can add that information so you can go to the taxes on the left hand side i believe it's the same under the business view and then you've got your sales tax tab up top and then you could set up your sales tax settings and i set up this other rate down here at just the five percent as another option so it'll be my generic five percent tab okay closing that out back to the tab to the left what's this going to do it's actually fairly complex of a transaction even though the data inputs fairly easy it's going to increase the accounts receivable because it's an invoice the other side's going to go to sales it's going to increase the accounts receivable for the full amount by the way plus the sales tax the other side's going to go to sales driven by the items which are telling it which income account to go to but it's only going to go up by the 3450 the amount we charged the sales tax which we're imagining isn't us charging, therefore not income, but we're just the tax collector. That's actually the tax from the state local government to the customers. That's gonna to go to a payable account for the sales tax. And there's gonna be a decrease in the inventory driven by the items we sold and cost of goods sold, the expense account for us consuming the inventory is gonna go up for amounts, decrease to the inventory, increase in our cost of goods sold, that aren't on the invoice, but known by the system because we put them in place with the items. So the impact on the income statement, increase to income, 3,450 minus the increase in cost of goods sold, which we don't see on the invoice because it's driven by the items. We'll check it out when we record it. Also, there's gonna be the sub ledger for the accounts receivable impacted for Anderson Guitars, uh, which will be tracking by customer and the subledger for inventory will go down in terms of units as well as dollar amounts. So actually a lot going on. We could add a message down here. We can have a, an attachment if we need. We can cancel, clear. We can print preview. Let's do that. Let's print preview the report because oftentimes we'll email it. So this is a report if you're doing invoices that a client will see. So you might want to customize it. This is a customizable uh, invoice so so we might go into those options to do that later to make it look nice because it's not just an internal data input form and then you've got you can make it reoccurring you can uh, customize here and then you've got your more options to copy void delete uh, trans transaction journal and so on so let's go ahead and save and close I'm gonna hit the rise up or the drop down save it and close it and check it out so if I go to the tab to the right the balance sheet and run it we should have an increase to accounts receivable. That's what an invoice does. Let's go into that and check it out. There it is. There's the 3,622. If I go into that down, drilling down to the source document, that's for the full amount, 362250. That looks good. Scrolling back up, I'm gonna close up the invoice and go back to my form. The other side's on the income statement to the profit and loss, run it. Finally, activity has happened. There's our sales. Note that the sales is on the books for, they give us three line items because there were three line items on the invoice, but the total 3,450 does not include the sales tax. So we, they put it on line item by line item and the sales tax is not included. Where does the sales tax go to be in balance? Closing this back out, back to our income statement. That's gonna be on the balance sheet, back to the balance sheet. And then we go down to the liabilities we should have a payable. They put it into the California department because it's going into, that's the vendor that we pay for the sales tax. And that could help you instead of just putting it into a generic sales tax payable account, if you had multiple sales taxes that you're gonna pay because it's gonna break it out by department instead of what you would expect, which would be like sales tax payable. But we're gonna go in there and there it is. There's the sales tax being calculated. And that is that 172 that we put on the generic sales tax item it's only one line item because we did the generic tax if you did the california tax it might break it out into three line items because you're actually paying three different kind of for three different kind of things state local and whatever and so then i'm going to go back and then inventory also impacted so if i go up to inventory that's going to go down so if i go into that you can see this one invoice had four line items related to it because there's multiple line items on the invoice. If I scroll down a little bit more and go into one of those, you can see that that 1,600, for example, that amount's not here, 
because uh, it's going down by by uh, it's it's going down by the cost, not by the sales price. This is the sales price. So I'm going to close this back out. Also note that you might say, hey, look, there's three line items here, and there's four, and there's like four line items here, and I believe that's due in part to the the fact that they're using a a, a tracking of first in first out for the flow assumptions, and so possibly due to layers on the flow assumptions, you might end up with with different levels here uh versus what's on the line items on the invoices i believe is what's going on with that so let's go back up i'm going to go back up and back and then the other sides on the profit and loss report and the cost of goods sold representing the expense of us consuming the inventory when we used it to generate revenue so we're matching the time period this isn't when we paid for it necessarily it's when we used it when we sold it so we're going to go into that and there is the other side for the cost of goods sold. So then the impact on the profit and loss, we can see clearly because this is the one only transaction we have. Sales went up by the sales price, cost of goods sold. The expense went up by the cost of the goods that we sold. Gross profit is the difference between the two. Now also what's impacted, if I go back to the tab to the left, we've got the accounts receivable also needs to be broken out not by just the date of the transaction, but by who owes us the money. We can see that in report form and we can see it in the detail on the left-hand side when we track our customers. So let's go to the tab to the right, right-click on it and duplicate the tab and look at it first in report form. So we're gonna go to the, to the reports on the left-hand side, which we've seen in the past. And then I'm gonna scroll down a bit and we're gonna go down to, to the AR who owes you. And we can look at a couple of these, but a common one is the accounts receivable aging summary. Let's look at that one and change the range or just the date 12, 31, 2, 3. Run it and it breaks out the, the dates here because I put it at the end of the year. That's why it's all over 90. But the point is we've got the people that owe us money broken out in that format. And then the total ties out to the 24, 122, 50. That's what should be on the balance. Uh, 24 122 50. now in practice we're gonna have to collect on that receivable so we're often going to go internally tab to the left into the sales tab on the left hand side and then we're going to be tracking this information by going to the the in my what am i on the sales tab and then we might go into the customers and then closing the hamburger and we can look at our customers. We can look at our invoices up top and look at the open invoices this way. That will show us our customers that have open invoices. This one has two of them. For Anderson, I can go into Anderson. There's our open invoices. And then we might also go into our sales tab over here and then look at the all sales up top. And we can search in here as well, sorting our sales transactions. Note that if you're in the business view, these are in a different, little bit different location. They're kind of separated. If we were on the get paid and paid area, that's where your customers are. And then if you were in the bookkeeping area, that's when you can go into your transactions up top where we saw the expenses before. Now we're on the all sales transactions. They kind of put those side by side in a little bit different fashion on the business view. But once in here, we can then say, okay, now we can sort our transactions. They got some sorting options up top. So we've got, for example, open invoices. I can select that item and there's our open invoices. You see the drop down. We got all invoices here. You can also sort for it this way, you know, all invoices. And we've got those invoices here that were set up when we set up the, the beginning balances. And this is the invoices that we created. Now we would expect the next thing to happen is we receive payment we'll go into the receive payment in a future presentation and obviously when we're communicating with the client we're going to have the receive payment and we might then send them you know reminders or statements about the open invoices that they have that we could set up to do periodically okay let's do another one so we're going to go back on over and say let's do another one let's hit the plus button up top make another invoice this one i'm going to say is going to go for jones guitars which i think we already have a client or customer for Jones Guitars. So it's set up, good to go. We're gonna, got the email address. 
and so that looks good billing and we're going to have the terms of 30 days that looks good let's set the date let's move the date up like a day here i'm just gonna hit the plus button so that that moves it up a day so that's a, like a little bit of a quick way to do that we've got the invoice number populating automatically the sales location populating which will help us to calculate the sales tax generally no tags that we're going to be adding and then i'm just going to type in what they're purchasing they're going to be buying a g-i-u-s-a a g-i-u-s-a and so that's a gibson usa we're going to say the quantity we'll just keep it at one so we're going to say there it is and then that's good and it should be taxable so it is a taxable item so I'm going to say, okay. And then we've got a ELP. So I'm going to say ELP. And that's going to be an Epiphone Les Paul. So that looks good. So we'll say that one. And so that's going to be an Epiphone. We're going to say we want eight of those. I'm going to say eight of those. It is a taxable item. So that looks good. And so that puts us at 4,380. And then I'm going to change the sales tax for the generic problem to be to be the 5%. So we'll change it to the 5% to make it generic. You can change it there or you can change the math here if you just want to work, work and make it kind of a generic 5% for practice problem purposes. Okay, so that what's this going to do? Same thing. Let's just re let's just recite it. Again, it's an invoice. That means accounts receivable is gonna go up by the full amount, including sales tax, 4,599. The other side then is gonna to go to revenue, but only by the 4,380 on the income statement, because that's what we charged. The difference is sales tax, 219. It's not on the income statement, because in theory, we didn't charge them that amount. By the way, the expense is also not on the income statement. You can imagine a system where we charge the 219 as income, and then expense when we pay the expense that would be a kind of like if we were if it was part of our business but it's, we're trying to imagine that we're just a tax collector and therefore the income's not hitting and, and the, therefore we have no expense related to it as well it's just going to a payable account it's a balance sheet item not going through the income statement increase in the payable uh by the 219 also inventory is going down by an amount not on the invoice but driven by the items and cost of goods sold the expense related to us selling the inventory is going up the net impact on the income statement will be the increase in the sales price minus the cost of goods sold and the accounts receivable sub ledger will track the accounts receivable by customer not just by dollar amount and the sub ledger for inventory will track inventory on a perpetual basis by unit not just by dollar amount so a lot a lot going on actually quite complex we're going to save it and close it and check it out so now let's go to the tab to the right to check it out and we're gonna we're gonna run it up top run it running i don't think i looked at the inventory report last time we'll look at it this time accounts receivable has been changed so there's jones jones is on there that looks good that amount 4,599 is the full amount including the sales tax closing that back out back to the balance sheet other sides on the income statement tab to the right run it to refresh it income sales has gone up now it's going up it put multiple line items to increase it because we had multiple line items notice the prices though 4,003 and 380 do not include the sales tax of the 219 so we're out of balance by the sales tax where does that go double entry accounting system has to be in balance back to the report it's going to be back on the balance sheet in the liability section and this is the tax we're collecting for our trustee california department of administration basically sales tax payable there it is there's the diff for rents on that one but we're not done yet we're not done yet going back we also have inventory going down because we're tracking it on a perpetual system not a not a periodic one not a periodic one inventory let's go into that one it's going down multiple line items tracking the inventory for 3001 it's going down by amounts here 3200 304 that aren't actually on the invoice but driven by the items the system knows what they are just like when you check out something on the grocery store 
and you don't know how much they paid for it, but the system does and it records it in a perpetual inventory system, even though you're just simply running the thing across the scanner. And then the other side's going to the income statement and the cost of the goods that are sold, expensing them as we're selling them, matching in accordance with the accrual matching principle at the same time. So there we have it. So let's close that out. Also, that's not all. That's not all. The, the net impact on net income is the income minus the cost of goods sold. If I go back to the balance sheet, we've got to the A to the R needs to be broken out also by uh, by customer, which we could see in report form on the subledger. Updating the subledger we ran last time. It's now at twenty eight uh, seven twenty one. We, owe, we are owed money by Anderson, Jones, and Smith Guitars for that 28721. That should tie out to the balance sheet, 28721. Also, if I go to the tab to the left and track this internally, I can look at my sales items. I now have five open invoices that I can expect to receive payment on in the future. If I look at this in terms of customers, sales tab, customers, then I can look for the open invoices by customer. And so now we've got that way to that way to see it as well. And so I could go into Jones Guitars and say I expect payments from Jones Guitars here. We could send them statements and whatnot if we so choose. Let's also look at the inventory. This inventory should have a sub ledger breaking out by unit. Let's go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate that tab, and then go to the reports on the left hand side, the reports. And then we're going to go into, let's just type in inventory. Inventory valuation summary. Change the date to 12-31-23. Run it. And so now we've got the unit, the items and the quantity. And then the dollar amount, 40676 That should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. And the 40676 looks good. Now, obviously the invoice would be a lot more simplistic if you just had a service item and no sales tax, right? But when you get into the tracking inventory perpetually and have the sales tax, then there's quite a lot of action going on with the invoice. There's actually a lot, a lot happening. You gotta make sure it's set up properly to have it all working systematically. Let's take a look at our trial balance now to see where we stand. I'm gonna go to the tab to the right, duplicate it, right click to duplicate it. Got a lot of action going on up top. Let's go to the reports on the left and type in trustee trial balance, the trustee TB, not tuberculosis, trial balance. We're going to change the range, 010123121231, 123, run it to refresh it. And so this is where we stand at this point. If you're following along and you're matching out, great. If not, try changing the date range. It's often a date range issue. If you see numbers change, when you change the range, drill down on that changed range, change dollar amount, and then see if you could possibly change the date, which you got to be careful of in practice, but works well for a practice problem. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll also do a report by transaction report at the end of entering the first month of data input to further drill down on any differences.